Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. This is gonna be fun. So I get a lot of questions um, about a lot of different things with art, making art, uh, approaches, and all these kind of different things. But one thing that I do get asked a lot is how do I make blue lines? Um, what DPI or PPI uh, do I print my blue lines at? On and on and on. So what I did first is I went on Google and I just searched for David Finch pencils. This was actually for someone a couple of days ago. Jackson, you never texted me back with your email address. Um, <laughs> so do it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so um, yeah, the first thing, you know, uh, uh, this is another question I get all the time. Where can I get high res scans of pencils? Um, look, the reality is this is better than any photocopy that I ever got when I was doing my samples to break in. I'm not kidding you. Until I actually met with Wildstorm and showed them my first sample pack, which I had been inking probably at that point for on and off for six to 10 months. Um, uh, I would just get like, you know, fifth, sixth, 10th generation pencils. This is already more high res. I swear to God, if I showed you the samples that I worked over, it was insane how poor they were. Um, so I'm gonna show you one, how I prepare this for um, a blue line, how I convert it to a blue line. I'm gonna show you some shortcuts um, uh, in Photoshop that I use, how to create a set of actions, and hopefully I can knock all this out in like 15 minutes. So yeah, first thing you're gonna wanna do is go on Google, search for the artist you're interested in. Um, you can go into the settings and select size and go large, I would recommend, so you're not filtering through things, and then just pick the ones that are the best. You know, beggars can't be choosers, but I found four what I consider very, very nice pieces. This was a sketch that he did for C.B. Sobolski of all people, it's kind of funny. Um, but uh, this one is the smallest of them, and we'll look at the, um, the settings on it and I'll explain everything. So first things first, um, we'll go in image and image size, and we're just gonna look at what these are. So they're actually scanned at 11 by 17, but they're at 72 um, PPI, I guess. Uh, Let's see what this one is really quick. We're just, just, just to get an idea. So this one is control alt I. I'll remember that in a second. So this one is bigger. This is 28 by 19. So first thing I do is I go control N or I think in, um, on a Mac, it's either Apple or command. But when I go control N, I'm opening a new document. So I'm going to create my template at 600 PPI is what I prefer. And then I set it to inches and I go, 11 by 17 and I want to keep it RGB color because it's going to be a blue line. So there we go. People will tell me, you know, oh, Clip Studio Paint, you can do this in one one push of a button. I'm going to explain why I do it in Photoshop and why it's better. So do you see all this stuff, the, what do you want to call it, like measuring tools and the indicia and all this stuff? I don't want any of this on my blue line. I always remove it. Um, and I'm going to show you something else. So control U will bring up the hue saturation or command U. Um, a lot of times when I get my pages from say Ryan Benjamin, the blue, okay, do you remember what the blue looked like at first? You see how that's a little bit of a brighter blue? Sometimes people's scanners aren't calibrated the same and you'll see blue lines that maybe are drifting a little more into this. Okay, so the problem with this is, this isn't gonna read as a hot of a, a blue that can be removed easily. So the first thing I do is I go in hue and saturation and I wanna make sure that that cyan is popping hot. So I actually move the saturation up because I wanna remove all this. The, the action in Clip Studio will not remove any of this. All this that does is turn all this blue, but all this junk is still on your page. And when you ultimately ink it, all this stuff is still sitting underneath it. And to me, it looks uh, unattractive. So once I get it there, I have a set of actions. I can just go in here and I've created all these different um, things. A lot of them I don't even use. Some of them were just examples I've never deleted, but removing blue crops is one. I'll actually show you manually how I do this, but I can just hit this and then hit play and remove the blue crops like that. And if there's any kind of residual, I click on this icon right here, which sometimes will look like a hand clenched, but um, you can, it's just O is the shortcut key, not zero, but O. So O is dodge or burn, and like you want it set on this one. But then what I'll do is I go in here, 
and I can hit this and remove any of the um, stuff that's remaining like if there was some of those dotted lines so I'll hit the borders with that and, and even sometimes clean up the pencils I would also crop this I don't want that extra crop here so I mean you can use the crop tool or, or I, I always tend to use the marquee but um, I'll do it this way I guess I don't normally use this one <laughs> And you just hit enter and crops it and then deselect or does it deselect or does it hit marquee okay so anyway but um so what were the actions that i used to remove all the blue manually because you're not going to have actions set up yet um and actually I'll, I'll do it and show you how to do it so we're going to go into this you may not have this here i've pulled these out and put them in i don't really care about the order of them generally um, and I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Uh, Anthony Jones, a AKA Robot Pencil, um, was definitely a huge inspiration on me. When I came to YouTube, I was already on YouTube for a couple of years, but the educational value that he provided for people that followed his um, uh, YouTube channel was tremendous. And I actually have bought almost all of his Gumroad videos. So I've supported him um, full on because I think he's great. He, he has a real passion for teaching in any way. So he had uh, a, a Gumroad video where it was like the basics of Photoshop, how to set up Photoshop for concept art. So um, a lot of this I, I kind of gleaned from him and some of it I already knew. But um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so if you can't find it, you can go into Window. And do you see these and then you can just select it and then actions will appear somewhere and if you want to place it in here um, you know all this stuff you can pull out and then push back in as soon as you see the blue line appear <clears throat> then it's in there so anyway and you can move it if I want to set it here you just grab it and drag it so anyway so when you want to create a new action you're gonna go in here and you're gonna click select this new action so I'm gonna call this YouTube remove blue and then I'm gonna hit record and it's gonna to start to record the process that I'm doing so I'm gonna go control U, which is gonna take me in the hue and saturation and then there's a drop down I know the shortcut key for it but we're gonna isolate blue cyan and green so I'm gonna go um, control 7 do you see how that switch to blue if I go control 6 it switches to cyan if I go control uh, five it goes to greens it doesn't really matter what order I do it but I'm gonna remove all those so when I'm on greens which was control five or command five I take the saturation all the way down I take this all the way down and it's recording all this and then I hit enter then I'm gonna go control U control six and I'm gonna remove the cyan I'm gonna click OK or enter control oh sorry control U control seven and then that and do you see how the blue crops are just slowly vanishing away and then I'm not sure if it records this I think I'm I'm in Photoshop CS6 right now CC was giving me problems but um, I hit uh, the O I mean yeah oh the letter O and then I'm just brightening this to remove any of that residual um, pre-existing stuff because I don't want any of that on my page I don't think you can crop it in also you wouldn't want to because not every page would need the same crop but anyway then I go like that and it's done so oh and I can you can go like this go control L do this and then hit this gray area and it will brighten it and remove a certain shade of gray and then press stop right here okay so now I've created a YouTube remove blue set of actions that anytime I have a page brand new I can immediately just remove the crop so I select it and then hit this little play button and it runs through all the actions and does it immediately for me so that's the first step of just cleaning it up now to turn it blue I just would hit this for myself this is an RGB scan, so yeah, and I would go like this, and I have a blue line. So two pushes of the button for me pretty much gets me set up for a blue line. Um, and I'll show you the next sequence of events that I do. But 
before I turn it blue, once I've got the crops removed, what I do is I take it and I drop it in my big template. So I'm taking the marquee tool, I'm holding my left mouse button down and I'm dragging it until I have this. Then I go control X and I'm gonna put it in this template. And you're gonna see how much, remember this is 11 by 17 and 600 PPI. So watch when I drop this in how small it is. So what I do next is I go control T, which is transform. And I'm gonna grab this corner. I'm holding the left button of my mouse down. And you don't want the turn because that will rotate it like this. What you want is you want to grab the corner where it's going like that. And then I hit shift and that maintains the proportions of the piece. And I'm gonna go like this. And I already can predict there'll be people going, this is such a slow, shitty way to do it. It's fine. Make a YouTube video and you can share you the way you do it. <laughs> and then uh, I pressed enter and then I'm going to press control F. Oh, you know what? That's not a shortcut key that you have. Um, so in here you can go layer, flatten image. I created that. I'll show you how to make a shortcut key um, later. But anyway, so now it's a flat image, meaning that there's not two layers. Because if you look here, when I pasted it in, now I have this layer and I have what they consider the, the background layer, which was the template. So if I go control F, do you see it turns into one layer? Now I would go into my actions and I hit turn a page blue. And I have my blue line and it's ready to ink. And this is fine. This is, I'm telling you, this is a thousand times better than any blue line. Or, or what I would do is I would take the photocopy of the pencils and take a one, uh, one ply sheet of Bristol board with a light box. And that's how I would do my samples. But this is great. You could print, you could take this to a printer right now, Kinko's, FedEx, whatever, um, you know, a print shop in your local area. And if they have a color printer and can print on a Bristol board, you're good to go. That's it. So, um, now let me show you the, the, simple sequence of turning it blue. So we've got it in pencils. You're gonna go control U, control, uh, well, you know what? Actually, this is a color balance one. So I think I go image, adjust the color balance, and I'm gonna pull it to cyan. I'm gonna turn it to blue, take it about to right about here, and then I hit okay. And then I go image, adjust color balance. So control B, I guess. Uh, how do I do it? Let me see. Color balance. Oh, hue, saturation, and then brightness. Okay, so, yeah, so color balance. Take it to the cyan. I know what I did wrong. And then take it to blue until it's looking blue. It won't be the shade of blue that you want yet, but you want to do this. And then go control U, and then go into that hue, saturation, and you want to pull the lightness up and lighten it until it's just about as light as you want it and then go control control b then take it to cyan again and then you're getting your blue uh, more of the shade that you want it and go okay and then go control u and then lightness and that's it you know it's a really nice blue line really really good perfect you know you could crush it on this and it's 600 ppi um, you know, and it, look, if you take a really small low res file, um, it's when you print it out, it won't be crystal clear, but I'm telling you, it's still plenty good to ink over. So I hope that helps. And then the other thing I was going to just show you is how to create, um, a shortcut. So you go into keyboard shortcuts. So say there's something that you do all the time. For me, one that I would do all the time is I would go into image mode and I would turn things grayscale, but there was no shortcut key for that. So we're gonna, we'll create a new one. Let's see what we've got. Lo uh, vibrance, what do I use occasionally? Threshold. All right, so we're gonna create a shortcut key for threshold. I'm gonna do Control Alt T, which is kind of a riff off of my, um, uh, this Alt Control G. So I'm gonna do threshold so I have to know what menu it's in. So it's adjustments threshold. So now when I want to create a new shortcut key, because I've been using that a lot, it was... So what I would do is I'd go in here, I would go image, and then I want to find threshold. Here's threshold. So it doesn't have a shortcut key. So I select it, and I'm going to go Control-Alt-T, and it's saying 
The Alt key is already in use with another command. If accepted, functionality and shortcuts will remove from one or the other. I would click accept and then I've created a shortcut. Um, so anyway, that's a way that you can create shortcuts. Generally speaking, it will tell you that that um, you know there's already a shortcut command for it. So at least be aware of what the original one was before you decide to switch it. And there's many, many things in here that I don't use. And so as long as I know that I've never ever used whatever Alt Control T would be, then I'm fine. So anyway, that's how you do it. And then you just click accept or accept and you're good to go. I'm not gonna switch it right now. So that's about it. Hopefully that helps you guys. And um, yeah, you can make some really, really nice blue lines. And if there's any kind of stuff on the board, um, that you don't like I would recommend if you're going to use the dodge tool to clean it up do it while it's still in grayscale it definitely tends to work better than using the dodge tool on the cyan blue which is sort of the shade of blue and then finally once you have the blue line finished the last thing you're going to want to do is save it I always save mine as a PDF I, if you're just saving it as a file to work on in Manga Studio or Clip Studio, if, if you're going to ink it digitally and you have created the thing in, in Photoshop, um, save it as a PSD. So it's this top one. But um, for my printer, they prefer PDF. So I save it as a PDF. So I already have it saved here, but I would select in the drop down PDF. Don't save it as a JPEG. I mean, you can, but I would, I would say do P PDF or PSD and you can always ask your local printer um, what they prefer um, like Kinko's FedEx has Photoshop on their computers so generally they can open a PSD but just go PDF and and uh, you can always call them and ask if you have a printer in mind um, and then when you click save um, it won't ask you this but I already have the file saved there so anyway and then it'll it'll give you these selections so preserve Photoshop editing capabilities is selected optimize for a fast web preview is selected and I didn't switch those those are just um, the default settings and then I save it as a PDF and make sure you don't shut it until this is done saving it and then you're you're good to go and that's a wrap okay cool have a good one hopefully that helps people um one locate files to uh know how to do it professional if you actually look this is not the version that i was showing you before i i forgot to show you how to save it so i didn't remove the um crop lines on this one but uh that's why i don't like them and in fact if you watch this i have that there i just don't like this because once it's inked and you have to scan it to share all that stuff still shows up and it's it's not as easy to move remove through the work as you might think sometimes double page spreads uh when you work over the original pencils this stuff is a nightmare um because you've got now four rows of it you have one two uh three and then one two three more on the connecting part so anyway but all right it's a beautiful blue line you could crush this piece all right later